Welcome to Math with Professor V. Here is your latest integral of the day. We have an indefinite integral of 1 over 2 plus e to the x minus e to the negative x. So if you want to pause the video, give it a try on your own. Otherwise, I'm jumping right in. I'm going to use a u substitution first, and I'm just going to let u equal e to the x. All right, so let's let u equal e to the x then that means du would be e to the x dx. But I'm noticing here I don't have an e to the x up in the numerator with dx. So let's rearrange things. That means du over e to the x is dx. And we're not mixing variables. Oh no, this is still just a calc one problem. So only one variable in the integrand at a time, which means I'm gonna replace e to the x down here with u. All right, so then this gives me du over u equals dx. And then we should be pretty much almost ready to rewrite the whole integral in terms of u. Only thing I wanna remind you is that right here, this e to the negative x, that's one over e to the x. So that'll come in useful when we're rewriting things. In fact, if you just need a moment, we can rewrite this. So you can see it super clearly. 1 plus 2 e to the x minus 1 over e to the x. Good? Okay, so let's go ahead. Let's rewrite everything now in terms of u. So instead of dx in the numerator, I'm going to have du over u. Or you could write 1 over u du. doesn't matter. Same thing. And then 1 plus 2 times u minus 1 over u. Very good. Very good. Now we need to clean things up because we've got a complex fraction going on. We've got fractions inside of fractions. So few different options. What I would say is the nicest here is this U, I can just move it down to the denominator and distribute and that'll fix everything for me. So notice we have integral DU over, if that U comes down here, then you have one plus two U minus one over U, good? And then if I just run that through, no more complex fraction. So du over u plus 2u squared minus 1. Beautiful. How are we doing? See where this is going? It feels like, oop, hopefully this denominator is going to factor. And then maybe we'll do partial fraction decomposition, which is exactly what's going to happen. So this is 2u squared plus u minus 1. Time for some partial fractions. So we have 1 over 2u squared plus u minus 1. That'll factor into 2u and u. The last terms are going to be a 1. This one needs to be plus and minus. That way I get plus u when I multiply it all out. And then since each of the factors in the denominator are linear and they're not repeated, then I'm just going to have constants in the numerator for my decomposition. So we'll have a over 2u minus 1 plus b over u plus 1. Now let's go ahead, multiply through by the LCD, 2u minus 1, u plus 1, so we can solve for the constants a and b. So let's see here, 1 equals a times u plus 1 plus b times 2u minus 1, and you can distribute and create a system of equations, or we can just come through right now and substitute in. Let's let u equal negative 1. Then 1 would equal a times 0 plus b times negative 3. So that means b is negative 1 third. And then similarly, if I pick u to be 1 half, that'll make this whole factor 0. So let me let u equal positive 1 half. Then 1 equals a times 1 half plus 1, that's 3 halves, plus b times 0. So 3 halves a equals 1, that means a is 2 thirds. Fabulous, fabulous. Okay, so then I can rewrite my integrand. So we have now the lovely 2 thirds over 2u minus 1. I'll put minus instead, and then the one-third in the numerator, 
and the other term was u plus one in the denominator. Put some parentheses and a du. All right, good. I'm not gonna do any more substitutions. I'm ready to integrate. Now, generally speaking, you should be comfortable with the fact that if you have integral one over x dx, it's natural log absolute value of x, right? Plus c. So I'm noticing this is the same form. Since there's a two in front of the u, I'm just imagining like, oh, I need to multiply by one half when I take the antiderivative. Or if you were to do a u substitution, then you would have a one half du, right? But we don't need to go through all of that. It's just a little constant, okay? So we can just mentally handle it. So you keep that two thirds that's in the numerator. Then we're gonna multiply by a one half and then I have natural log absolute value 2u minus 1. That's the antiderivative of the first term. All right there. Good? So I'll just repeat. This 2 thirds just comes along for the ride. This 1 half is here to undo the 2 in front of the u. If you had gone through another substitution, you would see we'd pick up a 1 half. Or just think when you're taking an antiderivative, right? You're undoing your differentiation rules. So when we take derivatives, we would have to multiply by a two, hence we're dividing by two. Okay, then the next term, we're just gonna have minus one third, this one's easier, natural log absolute value, u plus one, and then now let's put plus c on everybody. And then two thirds and one half canceled, I just have one third, natural log absolute value. Do you remember what u was? Yes, it was e to the x, so let's sub that all back in. Minus one-third natural log absolute value e to the x plus one plus c. And then I can factor out a one-third and then combine all of this into a single logarithm. That'll be beautiful. So one-third natural log absolute value. Now I do wanna say something. This term does not need the absolute value bars because I know e to the x is never negative. So e to the x plus 1, that's going to be positive. That's not the case over here because I have 2 e to the x minus 1. So that, you know, will be negative for certain values, which is why we need to keep the absolute value bars. If I kept the natural logs separate, then I could write it this one with absolute value, this one without. But since I'm going to combine them all together, then I need to keep it for the whole thing. We can only be as strong as our weakest link. Does that make sense? Since the numerator will need it, I have to keep it like so, because it's just one natural log. Okay, plus C, and we're done. But that's so beautiful. Aren't we glad we combined them into a single logarithm? I certainly am. Anyways, that concludes the video. How did you like it? Did you get it right on your own? I hope so. There's going to be an integration B where I teach this Friday. Just imagine if you haven't heard of it before, spelling bee style, but with integrals. Yes. <laughs> so if you're prepping for something like that, just let this playlist run. It'll help you sharpen your skills. If you need any review of Calc 2 topics, Calc 1, or you're in Calc 3, whatever you're taking, I have full video lectures for every lesson and they're organized into playlists on my YouTube channel. Subscribe if you haven't already, give the video a thumbs up, and you can also follow me on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Math with Professor V. I have classes taking exams later this week and next, so once they're done with that, I'll record the solutions to their exams and share. Calc 2 is taking their exam on sequences and series, and I'm sure you guys are curious to see what their test's gonna look like. I'm excited, I hope they do really, really well. They've been working so hard. So anyways, that's it, I have to go to work now. I'll be back sooner than later, love you all, bye.